Hey guys, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. First day back working in the fish room after my trip to Japan. Last day I got sick, so I've been fighting off this cold and I might sound a little weird. Uh, but doing lots of catch-up work. Uh, things that didn't get done, like uh, for instance, my camera catches up here. My tank that was here turned completely green. So I have UV sterilizer on it, but not quite fast enough, so I'm doing like 100% water change. Just because I don't think a green tank's gonna look that good um, while I'm filming. So, gotta fix that. I don't even know why I decided to turn green. Maybe because I didn't do a water change on it? There's one fish in there, but it probably just actually like completed its cycle or whatnot. Um, but I also had to mow the lawn because it's been sunny here, so that crazy overgrew. Uh, I did maintenance on my pond today, and uh, oh, the yard's all wet, that's, my shoe just got wet, that sucks. Uh, but we'll tune in here, so, you know, did a little bit of water change and back flush the filter, still have green water, and uh, you know, I'm going to work on that now, now that I'm back I can actually work on this, had to weed eat all around here. Uh, so it's already like 3 o'clock and I, that's why I look, I guess, haggard because I've been weed eating and mowing and doing things like that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there are lots of Daphne in here. Uh, I haven't been doing anything with them yet. Let's see if I can, if I put my hand there maybe, you can see the Daphne. But, so we got a little bit of Daphne going there. I need to repair my spigot over here which if I have to run to the hardware store today I'm gonna to do that so I don't know if I'm going to yet um, but this is on the to-do list since uh, since there's that pinhole right there from this winter I've got green water and water hyacinth in what I'm doing right now is I'm actually prepping for the koi I've got koi coming in from uh, Japan, I pick them up on Thursday, so I've got to move some fish around in there a little bit. Uh, I've also got to get totes ready at the store. So that's what's going on here. I've got my van open and I had to do a little bit of rinsing because they sat out all winter. Uh, but these totes go to the store, get them filled with water, and start cycling them so that uh, I can land koi in there. And then if we go to the front of my house here, which need to do lots of cleaning. I shouldn't be shooting videos, I should be cleaning up mess now that it's not raining on me. It's supposed to start raining like any day now. Uh, but, as you can see, I had to mow the front yard as well. Oh, and I forgot to put my weed eater away. I'll make sure I do that on the way back in. But, I want to show you guys the back of my car here. Uh, a long-term deal finally went through. So if I open this up. Lots of acrylic tanks. And uh, these are all Sea Clear tanks. Uh, so I bought out a pet store, and it's another, it's another one of those long-term deals. Um, trying to think when I, when I heard they were selling these tanks was probably, well, yeah, January. So now it's May, right? So five months, and I'm gonna grab this weed eater while I'm walking here, but. So they were moving and they wanted ridiculous money, like, I don't even know, like $1,000 per rack or something like that. So they had the racks these tanks went on, and for 1000 bucks you'd get like, um, like, let's say of 15 gallon tanks, which I bought a lot of those, uh, you'd get like two, four, like 16 of them in a rack. And so while that's not terrible, right, like 16 tanks, at a thousand dollars with the rack, which the rack I didn't want because it take it was built to withstand an earthquake, and the racks were like eight and a half feet tall, and that wouldn't even fit into my doors. So one, I didn't want to rent a U-Haul. Two, I didn't want to have to get a forklift to load them, and then unload them. This set my weed eater there. Uh, so, but. You know, if you were to divide, let's say, let's say I got 20 tanks by thousand dollars, it's still 50 bucks each, right? Is that right? Two, two per hundred, and there'd be 10. Yeah, so that'd be like 50 bucks a tank, which is way too much for acrylic tanks when you can buy 
brand new glass ones or something like that. So anyway, what I did is I swoop in and uh, I talked to him. I go, look, I'll buy every single tank that's here, whatever you can't sell at the inflated price at a dollar a gallon. And normally I wouldn't pay a dollar a gallon for tanks, but uh, I love acrylic tanks. And uh, there's a couple of reasons why. One, they're easy to work with, they're easy to move. You can stack them and it's unlikely you're gonna break them. Whereas if I go buy 50 glass tanks and I don't set them up right away, I'm gonna chip a corner or two, so I'm gonna lose a couple right there. Um, and then drilling them is a lot easier. Plus these ones uh, have blue acrylic, which I wish it was black, honestly. Like if I was having a maid, I'd have them black, but you know, blue acrylic and uh, so that means I don't even have to paint them. So these are very close to me setting up. All I gotta do is set up some stands and then boom, I, they're already got bulkheads in them which I'm probably gonna have to change out, but um, you know, this is our feeder goldfish tank here, but uh, so I've got, so I'll tell you the deal I finally got. So I finally get the call, they gotta be out of there, you know, and they had to be out by uh, two days ago, right? So this would have been uh, they were moving, took them like four or five months, which moving a fish store is unbearable. Uh, but they give me a call about a month ago and say, all right, we got to be out of here. We've got X amount of tanks left. And uh, they weren't quite ready before I went to Japan, even though I went down to pick some up. So they ended up delivering to me right when I got back. And it turns out I bought, uh, of the 15 gallon tanks, uh, or not, they're not 15 gallon, but they're like a 15 gallon footprint. They, um, got 25 of those I believe so I've got 25 of those and then of the one that's taller which is like 25 gallons I gotta check my water over here make sure I'm not flooding uh, I think I got six of those and then I got two 50 gallons so they're like four feet long let me just check on my water here and okay we're good phew there's nothing worse than shooting a video and then realize you're flooding uh, so I've got a little while I can talk more. Uh, so I got two 50 gallon, four foot tanks, 25, um, 20 gallons basically, and then six 25s or something like that. And basically it's 750 bucks. And that is a great deal for acrylic tanks to have those made new, probably in the realm of, well, I know I've had it quoted out. Even at wholesale, for me, if I buy in big quantities, the 20 gallons are about 80 bucks a piece uh, before shipping on the acrylic tanks. And so, you know, I basically bought them at 25% of the value and free shipping. So saving quite a bit there. Um, the other thing that I like about these tanks, as opposed to like right now, while this whole kind of deal was going on, like April, dollar a gallon, so I could have went and bought glass tanks. Now the reason I didn't is those tanks, the majority of them, are the footprint I want. They're only 12 inches tall. My koi are freaking out over here because I think the auto feeder just fed. Uh, <laughs> wow. I'll, I'll keep talking about the uh, about the um, the tanks here once this guy's done we're done feeding. But it's a feeding frenzy, obviously. Auto feeder for, feeds them four times a day here, and we're always changing water on them, but. Yeah, you guys can see some of my koi, like the Hayatsuri. Um, and then I've got the the newest one that I'm waiting to grow out here is this uh, Shiro Itsuri. But I've got the Matsubo down there. The green water's not showing off very well. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of Doitsu. And I've got quite a few Doitsu in here, which is kind of the scale list if you guys don't already know. Um, but anyway, back to the tanks. The tanks, the reason I like them so much, they're 15 inches front to back. And so it's not quite 18 inches, you know, like a 40 breeder, but I've got 24 inch long tanks. So left to right's 24 inches, front to back's 15 inches. And then, uh, you know, tallness is 12 inches. So I should be able to stack them really nice. And I've got a bunch of them and they're acrylic. They're pretty much ready to go. So if I get off the camera here, uh, I know what I want to do. Well, I can I can show you guys what I'm going to do next, and then if there's more time allows, I do that next after that. But it's already three, so um, go into the fish room here. Let my camera adjust. Uh, but I'm, my plan is to put one of these 50 gallons right here. It'll be four foot. It'll be low, 
which I think is going to work out kind of nice. And then uh, this is going to be a turtle tank, so I can bring, you know, the turtles from over there into there. And that's what I'm going to work on, like right now. Once I finish filling this water, I'm going to work on that. And then, if I can get all that magically done and get all the work loaded up and all that kind of stuff, um, then I'm going to work on plumbing over here. Because if I can get the plumbing done, whoop, then I can start building, either use racks like this or build racks like to put there. Haven't decided which one I'm going with yet. 100 gallon here sitting empty. I need to import fish. 40 gallon breeder basically empty. I need to import fish. My snails are going crazy, and I've got this weird like algae slash moss growing here. Like there's clearly algae over here, but over here it's oh, it's focusing on fish, but it's more of a, a moss than it is anything else. Auto feeder just went off, and uh, so all these infinite rain swarm snails. I've got leopards and reds and things like that eating away. Lots of uh, orange shrimp, and so you know. Again, breeding for profit there, triple duty. I've got uh, ram's horn snails, shrimp, and guppies all going off in this 40 breeder. I could sell plants too if I wanted to, but I don't focus on that so much. But I'm gonna check in later uh, and get started actually working and make sure I don't flood that tank because that will just put a damper on the day. So I'm glad to be back and we'll tune in a minute. So here is the turtle tank we're working on. Um, four feet long, 15 inches front to back. It's about 18 or 19 inches tall. It's got some plumbing that I need to delete. Like this isn't useful for me. They had this connected to a canister filter in their uh, feeder goldfish tank. I've got another bulkhead over here. This one's already capped off, so that's good. Uh, I need to keep the water level low enough so the turtles can't get out but can get out onto land where I'm gonna build a lay box so they can actually breed. So I've gotta figure out, you know, somewhere in here is where the water line is. Like clearly it's not up the top, but it might be like right here. And, you know, I should probably go a little bit lower so I don't have to re-drill that hole. Um, but I need to drill that so it can drain. And then I, I guess I should check and make sure yeah, I can't go too, too low, because back there, it wouldn't be able to drain. So that's, you know, that's a good point. I need to make sure that the drain is appropriately high, otherwise I'm really sorry. Um, or I need to buy a, a taller tank. Like, this is a 50 gallon, which it could have been, uh, ideally I was looking for a 75, but since I already have this now, I think it'll work. And because I'm auto-changing water, um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. As you can see here, I've got the ability to change lots of waters at four taps uh, for water to come in. So I could change tons of water. That should be no problem. So I'm not really worried about the actual volume. And then for the turtles, I'm not sure how much more space they can get out of a 75. They get three more inches that way. Okay, that's good. And a little bit more tall, but this tank is fairly similar for their needs. I don't think they need so much the tallness space. They're more crawling around the ground as opposed to swimming vertically. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started planning and I'll chime in and show you guys what I get done once I've got it done. So I've got the auto water change on and uh, let me show you how that works. So right here, we've got our four valves that I plumbed in to the auto water change line. And you can see here, this is how fast the water's coming in. And this is gonna happen for 15 minutes twice a day. Now, I've got it calculated, so it basically does 10% uh, of a water change, like on a 75 gallon. I don't know what it's gonna do on this tank yet because it's only 50 gallons, but then on top of that, it's only uh, gonna be two thirds full roughly. So I have to do a calculation of how much water change, but being that I stage all my water, uh, I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't think I can change too much water really on these turtles. It'll allow me to really keep high bio loads if I wanted to. And uh, yeah, so I'm kind of letting this fill and I'm going to work on getting this filled with sand. And uh, you know, that's all I can really do at this point. I mean, I, I could move the turtles, but I want to use them for another experiment at the moment. But 
The turtles are over here. This is their old tank, 55, no basking spot. You know, there's one that I bred that they laid in the water. Uh, but the survival rate when they lay eggs in the water is way lower than if they are laying them in a nest box. Um, but well, I'm going to move these guys once I finish up the experiment with the oxygen meter here because I don't want that load to change uh, so it won't skew any of the results. So, yeah. Well, it's after five now and I'm debating between cleanup, quitting, or going further. I, I could go any of those ways at the moment and I haven't decided which. Uh, we did finish the turtle tank. Not moving anything over yet, um, but that's it's got water, out of water changes, fills in this row. Um, you know, I got supplies from building it on the ground still, which that's part of that cleanup. Um, I could shoot some more videos in the, the studio. Oh, apparently, I gotta still unload more tanks out of my car, as you can see. Um, yeah, so maybe I should be doing odds and ends and seeing what I can get done here and then see if I can build some more, but, yeah. Well, I think that's all I've got for today. Got brine shrimp made up, fed the fish, uh, got another part of the auction test set up, so now that I've got a hang on back filter with water falling in, uh, got that turtle tank set up, did a little bit of figuring, looking around, uh, but I've got work to do. I gotta order fish and all that. I'm pl still playing catch up from Japan, so I gotta transship in a lot of stuff. It's koi season landing on me. I gotta pick up koi on Thursday and Sunday night at midnight, things like that. So I'm gonna call it. It's about 6 o'clock and spend the rest of the day editing and ordering stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.